Brent, tell us a little bit about uh, the Indy Fuel. It's their fifth year here. Uh, a lot of us knew the Indy Ice, and some of us this old knew the Indy Racers. Tell us about what the Indy Fuel is, where it stands in relation to the NHL, and how it's maybe different from the old Indiana Ice team. Yeah, for sure. Um, the Indy Fuel, we're, we play in the ECHL. Um, so that's double A hockey. So our guys, as you see out there, are basically two steps away from the NHL. So it's if you use the baseball system, we're basically a double A team. So we're affiliated with both the Chicago Blackhawks at the NHL level and the Rockford Ice Hogs at the American Hockey League level. Wow. So um, our guys, we actually right now, we have four or five players that have been called up to the AHL who are then just one call away from the NHL. So it's very, where the Indiana Ice a few years ago, that was uh, basically junior hockey. So you have play, your players are 18, 19, 20 year olds that are looking for to play in front of scouts and to earn college scholarships. Our guys are professional hockey. Like, this is pro hockey. Here's Manning up the left side shore. Cuts in on goal, shoots and scores! The fuel win! Quentin Shore with 13 seconds to go in overtime! Bernie, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, where you came from and how you ended up in Indianapolis. Uh, from Canada originally, up in Sudbury, up about four hours north of Toronto. And Played in the OHL and everything, played uh, a bunch of pro years, 13 years pro, I, got to, I was lucky enough to play and I ended my last uh, five out of my last seven years were here in India. I moved here in 99 to play for the uh, old Indianapolis Ice in the CHL and made this kind of home. My wife's from here and we've got two boys, so uh, I finished my career in Texas. It was nice to go play in, uh, in hot weather and some things like that, but then came back and really got involved in the youth hockey a little bit. And then when Mr. Hallett brought the team back and Scott Hillman was the head coach, he'd asked me to be assistant. And two and a half years later, I took over and now we're here. So it's, uh, it's been a great run. It's been enjoyable and we're, uh, we're having some fun doing it. And what's the uh, responsibilities of being a head coach and what's that like? Is this your first stint as a head coach at this level? At this level, yeah. So this is my third, uh, going on my third year. Uh, but I actually am the head coach and I run the head coach GM at this level. A lot of teams, their head coach runs all of it. So sure. you run the budget on the hockey side, you run the uh, trades, the free agent stuff, the recruiting, and, and then the coaching. But it's nice to have a full-time assistant we've got who helps with a lot of the paperwork and, and other things that can, you can do your job a little more. He does a lot of the video, so we're ready to go and we have to do stuff like that. And how many teams uh, are in the league? There are 27 teams throughout the league. They, they range from all over. Uh, we go to Utah, Salt Lake City next week. There's a team in Boise, Idaho. And then there's a new team out in St. John's, Newfoundland this year. Uh, and pretty much all the teams, except for two or three, are affiliated with an NHL team. We're, we're the double-A team, and there's a triple-A in, in between us. And then So we filter. We've got some guys from the Blackhawks uh, from Rockford that we help try to develop. At the same time, we have to have players in here, so we have to win, too, at the same time. And then as far as turnover, I mean, 75 games, that's a lot of games. Uh, do you see your team, does, does the face of the team change from when you started to that last game? You do a lot of traveling. Yeah. And last, how does Indy stack up in terms of market fans and, you know, just the electricity around the team? Well, it does change the roster. It, it has to. You try not to change too much if you can keep the core guys and keep your say 13 core guys and you have to replace guys due to injuries or due to call-ups like currently we have uh, almost all of our guys that are on contract with Rockford or Chicago up there right now so uh, we've got to find some bodies just to help and fill roles but it's it's the nature of the business every team's like that and then as far as the indie stuff it's it's one of that's gaining a lot of momentum we had the all-star game uh, last year which really helped uh, boost some things around here and then I think our playoff run and and just the investment the ownership's made with building the apartments for the guys. they got state-of-the-art living, and some of the places you go to these cities, it's, it's not as good. So uh, that's a big seller for us. And, and then we've had a few guys uh, have a taste at the NHL that have played for us. So that's another recruiting tool we try to get guys that, you know, a lot of guys that come here, they want to know that they're going to have an opportunity to, to get to the next level and how we're going to help them. So we have to kind of tell them that and explain that, and uh, that's what we try to do when we're here. And so I understand that, uh, you know, our top line guys may be gone, but tell us a little bit about one, two, or three of our, our best, most sought after players. So when our audience comes out to watch you, they can kind of keep an eye out for these guys. Well, uh, Josh Shallow, obviously we had him. He's a perennial 30, 35 goal scorer in our league. He's leading our team in scoring, but he's always an exciting guy to watch. Uh, one guy we know the fans will like some of them if they like the fisticuffs is Collins. He likes to get into it we and love have it. some Collins. fun. And, yeah, right, Anthony we'll Collins. And, He's not afraid. I think every game he's played, he's fought and had some fun, and he's, and he's done well. He's a pretty tough kid, and he's a great kid off the ice. Uh, the, both the Rupert brothers, 
Uh, they're twins, so if you get to see those guys, they're, uh, they're nasty, but they're skilled and they do some good things. And then you always want to keep an eye on the goaltenders because uh, both of them are, those are the only two we have currently on Chicago contracts. And you never know, the way they, they develop here at this level, they get to the next level, and a lot of them do make the NHL at some point. I got you. So let's just talk about Coach John's philosophy. When we come out to watch the fuel, what's, what's a Coach John team look like? And, and what are the things that we should know about uh, what's going on with those guys? Well, we're trying to, you know, go with the new game. It's a speed game. Uh, we try to make sure our guys play fast hockey, get up the ice, and, you know, all the guys hate defending, so we try to make sure we work on our defense, defensive zone, but let's get out of there as quickly and let's go have fun in the offensive zone. So we want to be a good puck managing team. We've showed it at times. There's times where we've uh, laid an egg, and obviously that happens, but for the most part, we've, we've done those kinds of things. But we want to be a fast hockey team. We want to be able to score some goals, make it exciting for our fans, have some fights, and have our goalies have a big save here and there. And we're, we're kind of averaging, I think, in and around the four-goal mark a game, which is good at our level. Um, so we want to continue that and, uh, and go from there so we get those fans out of their seats and cheering every night. I love it. Well, Bernie, I can tell uh, the Indy Fuel is in great hands. Uh, we appreciate, as your fan base, you putting out such a wonderful product. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, the next three or four months, and hopefully we'll see you at the playoffs. That's for sure. We appreciate all your time, too. Thank you. All right, very good. This is Glenn Bill for Boomer TV.